We are Group 8, presenting on the documentary, Abacus, Small Enough to Jail. We will be talking about the relevant facts, primary stakeholders, main ethical issues or dilemmas, how the dilemmas relate to DFEI principles, and recommended solutions, actions, and possible alternatives. The order in which you'll hear presenting first will be Alexis, followed by Troy, and then by Jessica. Hello, my name is Alexis Peinado. I will be going over the relevant facts and the primary stakeholders for this case. So, of course, we'll go ahead and start with the relevant facts. What are they? So, Abigus falsified home loans and defrauded Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae being a major mortgage company located here in, in the United States. Also, a loan officer employed there at Abacus by the name of Kin Yu was requesting and accepting tips from applicants, which led to the major investigation. And during this time, Abacus Bank was made an example and the business owners were treated unfairly with a huge lack of respect. In addition, the owners of Abacus Bank were not given the same plea deals as the other financial institutions with the same charges during that time. Fortunately, after five years, Abacus was found not guilty on all charges. And then next we have the primary stakeholders. Who were they? So the primary stakeholders in this situation are the owners of the Abacus Bank its employees, regular customers, as well as the Chinatown community as a whole. These groups were affected by the accusations brought by the district attorney's office, the DA, as this was degrading to the entire Chinese community. All right, so um, in this documentary, we found a few uh, main ethical issues or dilemmas. Now, an ethical issue is defined as a problem or situation that requires a person or organization to choose between alternatives that must be evaluated as right or wrong. Now, uh, the first uh, ethical issue that we saw is that some of the loan officers from the bank were fabricating loans, and then they were in turn submitting these loans to Fannie Mae. Now, one officer, Ken Yu, was also asking for tips from loan applicants, which is also unethical. So in this case, the loan officers um, acted in the wrong way, in the unethical way. Now, another ethical issue is that the bank decided to report their own former employees that were committing these fraudulent acts, even though it could hurt their bank, which it did. If the bank decided not to report employees like Ken Yu, then they may have never been investigated in the first place. However, they chose to do the right thing, which was reporting their employees, even though it hurt them. Now, the final issue that we saw was the treatment of the bank by the district attorney's office. So, uh, the district attorney's office um, tried to hit this small bank with everything they had, as well as humiliate them by uh, handcuffing all of them together and then praying them in front of the cameras outside of the courthouse. However, um, they could have went after the bigger banks in New York who were doing the same thing, but they decided not to do that. All they focused on was the small bank instead of the bigger, more uh, well-known banks. And also, the district attorney's office talked down on the bank after they were the bank was found not guilty on all charges. So we believe that the behavior of the district attorney's office was clearly unethical in this case. All right, so now I will discuss how the ethical issues and dilemmas relate to the DFEI principles. So there are eight DFEI principles, and they are integrity, trust, accountability, transparency, fairness, respect, rule of law, and viability. 
So the first principle that relates to this case is integrity. Um, the bank acted with honesty by reporting their employees' wrongdoings, even though it could end up hurting the bank, which it did. Now, the next principle is the rule of law. The loan officers who fabricated the loans and took tips, um, they obviously did not comply with laws and regulations set forth for the banking industry. Now, another principle that we found was fairness. So, um, the district, district attorney and his office did not use fairness when it came to prosecuting abacus. There were plenty of other bigger, more well-known banks who were committing loan fraud on a much bigger scale than abacus, yet the district attorney's office decided to only prosecute the uh, small family-owned abacus bank. Now, the final um, principle that we think relates to this case is respect. So once again, the district attorney's office, um, their treatment they gave Abacus Bank, um, really there was no respect there. They humiliated the bank when they um, handcuffed all the uh, family members and then paraded them in front of all the cameras outside of the courthouse. Um, yeah, there was just really a, a lack of respect there, and they didn't really treat them right. And so uh, those are the four DFEI principles that we found relate to this case. Some possible alternatives that could have been taken to prevent this case to happen could have been changing the location of the loan officers. They could have been set up in a less discreet area and more out in the open. Also having in place a better checks and balance system throughout the full loan process is necessary. This, in turn, would reduce false documentation and bribery between the applicant, the loan officer, and for this case, Fannie Mae. Although the documentation was going through so many hands, this caused issues of the documentation being overlooked. For example, during the trial, Mr. Yu sent a gift letter after the commitment letter was sent. The commitment letter stated the loan was already accepted, but he was still able to send a gift letter after the fact. One solution to this would be to not allow gift letters after the commitment letter is sent out. Also, providing information about banking policies and explanations of what is considered a gift and what is considered a loan, since the main discrepancy involved customers not knowing the difference. This would allow both employees and customers aware of the process and procedures that need to be done and followed. As an institution, they can run internal audits randomly throughout the year just to confirm everything is running smoothly and correctly. Hopefully this will stop the problem beforehand and maybe even fix it before it turns into something major down the line. In some cases, Signatures are being forged to speed through processes or even bypass certain steps. By creating a chain record of these documentations that can be passed over to the next step without that particular person personally handling it over to the next, this can prevent the option of false signatures and also allows the person to double check everything before going to the next step. In concluding this case, we believe that it's safe to say that none of the banks accused of fraudulent actions during the 2008 financial crisis were ever really penalized for any of the allegations. However, it's apparent that Abacus Federal Savings Bank was made an example by the district attorney's office in order to send a message to the larger, more powerful banks. They wanted to show them that they were also powerful and to demonstrate what they were capable of. Our only hope is that these huge financial institu institutions haven't taken the message lightly and will look out for the better interest of the common customer each and every day. In the view of the fact that it's unfair to know that the place we typically seek to consult about major financial decisions and we place a high amount of trust is not always a place of integrity or transparency and this 
We end our case for the Abacus case small enough to jail. Thank you.